Now, continuing our series of questions today, the next big question that people ask is, will this um, TV or video work for me? Right. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to make a distinction between what's really being asked here. You know, is the person asking, does the video work? Or are, or are they really asking, will it work for me? First thing, does it work? It doesn't work because there's a bunch of testimonials. I've got a whole Facebook thing devoted just testimonials, and a lot of the video comes up, plus the stuff on the website. These are verifiable things. So we know it can work. Yeah. So the question is, well, will it work for me? Um, you know, people say in the forum, you know, let me know how it goes for you, let me know how it works. Well, you know, it may or may not work for this person, doesn't mean it may or may not work for you. So Basically, no one can really answer this question. It's not a yes or no question. And how can anyone tell you the future? You know, I don't have a crystal ball. We do something by process of experimentation and trying and figuring out what needs to happen. So it works for a lot of people. It looks like the majority of people, but it also depends on you. It depends your timing, your motivation, um, being able to willing and follow instructions. You know, some children have a problem with this. If uh, you bring a bunch of other baggage in the process, then we're not just dealing with selective eating, but other things which need to be worked through, fear of failure, self-doubt, pessimism. And that's also why no therapy, no matter how good it is, has a 100% success rate. You know, no one on the planet. Um, well, let, let me rephrase that. No one who sees a lot of clients regularly for the same thing will eventually have a 100% success rate. There was a very brief time when I did a bunch of training and I had I developed this really good phobia protocol um, for animals and, and things like that. And for a short while, everyone I saw had a result. And I thought, great, this technique is infallible. Um, this is well before selective eating, uh, the program I did. I, I worked another program for extreme phobias, which was mostly with animals. And after that went on TV, a lot of people called me, and these are really hard cases. And suddenly my success rate started going down. <laughs> Because I'm not just dealing with a simple animal phobia, I'm dealing with OCD with this phobia. I'm dealing with this and this phobia and this with this phobia and a whole set of negative beliefs with a phobia. There was just more work to do. Yeah. So um, quickly, I, I want to talk also a little bit about um, a maintenance phase, you know, because people will sometimes say, well, I, I watch the DVD or I, uh, I don't want to call it DVD, it's a streaming thing. Um, or I saw Felix of Therapy. Sorry, anything popped up on the screen. And I was doing really well, but now I've sort of, you know, stopped trying new foods um, and, and advice and stuff. Well, you know, I say everything has a cause and effect. If you're overweight, you're fed up of being overweight, you decide to exercise and eat the right kind of foods, you stick with it as a new lifestyle, you'll always get change. Yeah? If you stop after a while, if you think, oh, it's too hard, it's too boring, I'm not sure what exercise to do now, or I've stopped attending the gym, I hope I can lose weight, you know, just by, you know, walking around at home or something like that. Then obviously you're not ticking the boxes needed to lose weight. You've got to tick the boxes that need to be ticked for change to keep happening. And the same applies to riding a bike, you know, learning to swim. Um, if you keep doing what needs to be done, you will continue to have the change. And I said this before in a previous live feed, people understand this in other areas of their life. But when it comes to food, for some reason, you know, don't apply the same thing, you know. Oh, I'm really bored of stuff. And why, oh, why am I not eating anything else? Because you know, you're bored with the food. You've got to shake it up. You've got a variety. You've got a plan. You've got to organize. See a food coach or something like that. Yeah. So um, <laughs> on that point, this is a kind of humorous thing, but, but it does actually work. The subconscious mind can be very, very literal. You almost have to spell things out to it. Yeah. Sometimes um, you might say, OK, I want you to try new foods. And your subconscious mind tries new foods. And then he thinks, well, what else do you want? I tried new foods. Leave me alone now. Which is a bit like my wife saying to me, you know, for years, why aren't you going to the gym and, you know, lose some weight? Uh, when you go to the gym, when are you going to go to the gym? And then weeks pass. When you're going to the gym and eventually go to the gym. And she says, great. And then I come back. And then she's waiting, waits a few more weeks. And then says, well, when are you going to the gym again? And I say, what do you mean again? I've been to the gym. You asked me to go to the gym. I've been to the gym. You know, what else do you want from me? It doesn't understand that, well, this is a lifestyle change now. This is a process I keep doing now. It's not a one-off. You asked me to try some foods, I tried some foods now back the old ways. Yeah. So sometimes it needs to be re-clarified with that. So, and that leads on to a more general point, which is um, elephants in the room. 
this is when therapy doesn't get the expected results. Um, you know, someone said to me the other day, um, on your YouTube video, there's, you know, like 200 something success videos. Uh, where are the ones where it fails? Uh, it, does, it has, I don't like the word fail, but it hasn't worked as expected sometimes. But uh, I understand, but it's just not good business acumen to keep posting my five top epic fails. You know, I, I, no real... No one really does that. Um, you want to post up things to show that change is possible, uh, repeatedly possible, but it's also kind of implied, well, you know, no therapist has a 100% success rate. It's not going to work for everyone. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I want to say is it, it's true. It might sound a bit harsh, but I'm afraid not. The truth is not all clients are equal. Uh, my format is by and large very um, consistent. The variability is really with clients, adults and children. And clients, especially children, have different levels of understanding and openness and comprehension and motivation and anxiety and other baggage. Statistically, if I see 100 people, there's going to be a proportion who are very easy to work with due to their personality type. A more open uh, personality type is always going to be more successful. I don't think I've had one person who hasn't had an open gregarious personality type that hasn't eaten food. That's very conducive to change, very open to change and very open to ideas and optimistic about them. There's straightforward cases uh, with very little baggage, easy to work with. And then there's people who are close to change anyway and very easy to put the threshold. And then there are those with other baggage that bring in the room. They're not just bringing in straightforward selective eating. If it's straightforward selective eating, there's a high chance of success, even with more negative or, you know, skeptical or dubious people, because there's a bunch of testimonials for that, too. I'm talking about, you know, something else. So, for example, number one, people with larger anxiety problems. Um, sorry, I'm just, um, some things popped up. Um, a client recently told me that, you know, I'm going to slightly rephrase this to make it more anonymous, that the 12-year-old child saw a sign saying, you know, danger, thin ice, and the child is basically traumatized by the sign because they'll think of images of falling through the ice and drowning and a cold, cold lake alone. Now, most children, if they read the sign, they just say, oh, they shrug their shoulders and go, oh, thin ice. You know, they don't take the next level and worry about it happening to them and worry about it happening to them. This child is not going to be as easy to work with as other children, yeah? uh, where they just stop the thinking process there. Um, we're dealing more with either a temperament or a mindset or an attitude about the world. And for this child, you're not going to resolve everything in one session because this is a process of the child uh, learning to build confidence, to understand things differently in the way the world works and trying new ideas in the real world and check them out and building. It's, it's a big learning curve. It, you can't magic one this away in, you know, one hour, or two hours or something. You know, there's a lot of work to do. It's developmental work. Yeah. So. But it's this anxiety, unfortunately, that gets in the way of progress because anxiety ends up making people a bit control freaky. They insist on controlling things. And it's trying to control stuff that actually derails the therapy. It's not the therapy itself can be rather easy. The second thing that gets in the way is people who lack, shall we say, emotional understanding or psychological mindedness. It's people who view the problems as outside of themselves and don't understand their role in the process. They don't realize that they need to or how they need to reassure self-comfort or motivate themselves is really important. Yeah, They think in terms of black or white. Does it work or does it fail? Well, it's a process that no work or fail. I don't go for a piano lesson and after one lesson I go, well, did it work or did it fail? You know, it, it's a process of learning how to play the piano. Yeah? So, clients who have this kind of sufficient insight, self-empathy, they always find this therapy and other therapies easy. They have good success rates because the learning curve is very short for them. So they get it very quick, quickly. They understand they have to take responsibility for managing their reactions and that the start of a confidence building process. If clients are ignorant of their role in this and they lack self-empathy, they tend to expect immediate results uh, without any care for whether this part needs more time or patience. If they don't get instant results, they blame, they judge, they criticize, and unsurprisingly, they block further progress. They're like a parent that cannot understand why the child keeps crying, 
and just wanted to shut up any means necessary rather than realizing, well, the child has its needs and up to me as the parent to figure out what the child wants. Um, and that figuring out is a process of trial and error. Yeah? So if the temperament is negative, pessimistic, you know, um, I don't really trust this part of me, I'm suspicious, mistrustful, skeptical. Um, if you don't have this good relationship with yourself, it's going to be harder, not just for this, but anything. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, one thing in life is learning to understand yourself and accept yourself and work with that. So there's a lot more work to do here. Uh, and the answer is not more pills or deeper hypnosis or whatever the case may be. That, that, that there's a maturity, understanding, this, this is work you know, that life is about. On a recent live feed, I also spoke about other negative mindsets, uh, hopelessness, helplessness, discounting victories, chronic pessimism. I'm afraid these people are always going to have, have it harder. Um, I believe there's a lot of malleability. I believe a lot can be changed about this. But these are big. It's, it's like backpacks full of heavy rocks dragging you down and always making progress harder. They, they drag you back. People who find it hard to change, they're, they're, they're like the patterns, they're set in the ways, and they say, I behave in this way in this situation because I behave this way in this situation. You know, all us human beings resist change to a greater or less degree because we cling to familiar patterns. We find security in familiarity, but some people are more open to, oh yeah, let's try something else, let's do something new than others. No, I've been this way before, so I have to be this way now. I'm going to cut the video now because now we're going to talk about something else. So um, I'm going to quickly just see if there's any questions about this. Um, yes, the question is, do you think we have the ability to overcome this ourselves? Um, well, if you read good self-help books and are reflective in that sense, you can take on board ideas. Yeah, well, by all means. If you need a formal coach or guide, you know, a good one word would help you with that too. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this uh, part of the question answering for now.